Hello everybody, welcome back to Wrigley's 4th Generation, I'm Alex Pat. It is early November, it is election season, there is a lot going on, but I have not made a video or podcast in a little bit. The last time I was on here, it really wasn't on this podcast, I made a few videos because the Cubs were in the World Series, as we all remember. There was a lot of anger and frustration through the first few games because they were down in the series. They would go down one to nothing, then they tied up, but then when they went down two to one and then three to one, that's when things started to get very bad. And when I mean bad, I mean there was a lot of loss of faith, which to an extent is understandable when you're down three games to one with the way that Indians pitching and overall the team was just playing seemed like everything was going their way. There was a lot of frustration. There were a lot of things being said by a lot of people. So I tried to make those videos. I don't know if you've seen them. In case you haven't, you could go watch them just for fun now. They don't really matter now. But I made some videos just for the fans to be like, hey, let's try to keep level heads here. I know it's not easy. Heck, I'll fully admit I wasn't fully level headed through this, but I tried to keep reminding myself who this Cub team was, what their identity was, and what they were capable of doing. The end result? They ended a 108 year drought and are the World Series champions. That's right, they're the World Series champions. This team was down three games to one. That last video I made? Yeah, down three games to one. I tried to keep positive. A big great deal of me was saying that this was over, and it wasn't. They won Game 5 thanks to some good pitching, thanks to Rollis Chapman for getting 8 outs. And then in Game 6, the bats woke up and slugged the ball all over the ballpark. And then in Game 7, a wild, emotional roller coaster like none I've ever been a part of. I mean, they had the lead, they lost the lead. The reins came down, they took back the lead, and then they won it all. On a slow dribbler to Chris Bryant, who threw over to first, to Anthony Rizzo, to win the World Series. With Mike Montgomery pitching. And the faith that many kept, the faith that many people thought that they couldn't hold on to, but they did. The faith that, heck, it was even being ridiculed by people. Oh, what do these Cubs fans have faith for? It's over. Don't they realize when they were celebrating Game 5? A lot of people were accusing Cubs fans of being overly faithful, which I think is ridiculous, because there was this whole notion of us being called bandwagoners, and then we have faith in our team, even when they were down and seemed like out, and yet they were being accused again. Cubs fans can't win. But you know what? They can now. Because they just won the World Series. And we are the first fans to witness a World Series. Because 108 years ago, the people who are somehow still alive today probably don't remember it. It was that long ago. And there's maybe just like a small group of less than 10 people who were alive back then. But now, we're all alive to see it. We're all alive to hear it. We're all alive to celebrate it. And 5 million of us were in downtown Chicago the other day as they paraded through the streets and into Grant Park. And every moment, every waking moment, ever since they won, it's been so exciting. I have not been able to sleep regularly ever since they won. The night they won, I, I could not sleep at all. I was up all night celebrating. I went out for a bike ride in the early morning as the sun came up, soaking in every bit of this World Series championship, something that we have all dreamed our whole lives of seeing, and now we're finally seeing it. You visualized it in your dreams and in your hopes, but here it is, it's a reality. And it feels beyond amazing. And this tour of this World Series trophy, it's going everywhere. It's going on Jimmy Fallon, it's been in the streets of Chicago, all over Wrigleyville, I was on Ellen this morning, 
It was. It's going everywhere. It like it reminds you of the Stanley Cup tour as we've seen in Chicago with the Blackhawks. But this is as much as I love the Blackhawks. This is ten times greater. This is the last great American sports story being told. The Cubs winning the World Series, and it really is. No story in baseball will really be bigger for a long time than this, than the Cubs winning the World Series. It was everywhere. Wrigleyville was up for grabs. Heck, really, most of Chicago was up for grabs. I was at home in the suburbs when they won, and I went out with the W flag that we have screaming in the streets, and there was so many people shooting off fireworks all around me. Like, it lit up the sky like it was daytime. There were so many fireworks. Honking horns, blowing horns, kind of like, you know, those... Those ones you used to see at the World Cup tournaments, those things that kind of sounded like a swarm of bees. But you, you, saw, you heard a lot of car horns, uh, some air horns too. Can't forget those. And just a lot of just jubilation. And emotionally, it was so much to handle. It was so hard for it to all to sink in at once. And honestly, I've dreamt of this before in my dreams and have waken up. And I was scared at some points that I was going to wake up and it was going to be just a dream. It's funny because a few nights prior, I actually dreamt that they won the World Series and I was in a big restaurant and I was hugging and high-fiving a bunch of people. And then I woke up. That felt awful. And I was worried at some points that that was happening again. I even pinched myself a couple times, I'll be completely honest. But it was real. And it all happened. In an amazing playoff run where when you thought the team was down and out, there they came back. In game four against the Giants, down two games to one against the Dodgers, down three games to one against the Cleveland Indians, defied all the odds, and won it all. And it seemed like that was kind of the set tone on the last day of the regular season when they had that comeback win in Cincinnati. Sometimes you feel like the last day of the season kind of sets the tone for the playoffs. It doesn't always, but it, it can happen a lot, and I feel like that's kind of what happened. And I think one of the greatest things about all this, no longer do we have to hear about goats, curses, innocent fans' lives being ruined, Black Cats, 1908, 1945, Lovable Losers, Choke Artists, it's all been extinguished. It's all been buried. It's dead. It no longer exists. And it will never exist again. Even if some hater or some moron tries to bring it up, we all know that it's dead. And anyone who tries to bring it up is just trying to get, you know, a kick out of us or trying to anger us, but it's not going to work because it is dead. There is no more curse. Even though we thought there was a curse when they blew it in the eighth inning, when Rajay Davis hit the home run to tie it, I mean, I was, I was beyond, I was beside myself. I can't even put into words what I was. I was beside myself. I was thinking this is going to be 10 million times worse than 2003. 10 million times worse. But it wasn't. They rallied together. Jason Hayward brought them together, I believe, in the weight room during the rain delay. The rain delay ended. The Cubs scored the runs. They won the World Series. So soak it in. Enjoy it as long as you can. And you know what? This great young team, they're going to be right back at it next year. This isn't some veteran team that's built to win right now or bust. It's not like those 08 Jokers who completely fell apart and never did anything since. This young team is built to last a decade. And a lot of them haven't even hit their full stride yet. And here we are with a young man in Chris Bryant, 24 years old, who is probably going to win the MVP. You have two Cy Young candidates in John Lester and Kyle Hendricks. You have Joe Madden, the manager, who... I will admit had some very questionable decisions in Game 7 and in the World Series. But at the end of the day, he won. And he did many great things during the regular season for the Cubs to get there. I mean, it's amazing that we have such a bright future ahead. 
even though the brightest moment has already shined. It's going to be fun, and I'm already excited for 2017. Will we see a lot of changes on this team? Not a lot. Depends what happens with Dexter Fowler. They extended the qualifying offer. He has until the 24th, I believe. No, sorry, the 14th of November. Mid-November, before Thanksgiving, to accept or deny that qualifying offer. And I have a feeling that if it's denied, that he will be talked about a lot in free agency, including the Cubs trying to get him back on a new deal. But you're going to see a number of teams want him. I know there's a lot of talks about the Mets wanting him and a few other teams as well. But I think the Cubs really want to bring him back. They love him. And he brought so much to the table this year. Him coming back was one of the best things that happened to this franchise. Because it led them to a World Series. You know, there's also other things. Um, I'm fairly confident Chapman is not coming back. He's probably going to go to the Dodgers, Giants, or Yankees. And they're going to pony up the dough for him. I think the Cubs are going to go elsewhere with that. There may be a trade or two. I think Soler might be part of a trade chip. They already said Jason Hamill is not coming back. But other than that, it's all pretty much the same. And hopefully we'll get a full year of Kyle Schwarber, which is another story that's amazing, considering a guy who hasn't played in like 5-6 months came back in the World Series of DH and made an immediate impact. He got hits, he drove in runs, he had great at-bats against people like Kluber and Miller, who were pretty much unhittable until Game 7. I mean, that's amazing. The guy's got a bad knee, he tore both ligaments, he completely blew it out. And here he was playing in the World Series. And that's historical right there. So much of this team has made history. And we get to enjoy every moment of it, no matter what other people say. We are going to enjoy it, and it's great. So just remember this 2016 team for the rest of your lives, and hopefully it'll lead to more championships down the road. Because the way this team is built, they're built to contend for a number of years. Which means they'll have other opportunities to get and win the World Series again. But it's so nice to have the pressure of that first one off. Because that is no doubt the biggest pressure of them all. So I just wanted to share my personal experience with this and kind of recap everything that happened. To do an overview of the whole postseason, why don't we do that before we sign off? They won games 1 and 2 against the Giants in the Division Series. Lost a tough Game 3 when it looked like they had a chance to sweep. There was the game where Madison Bumgarner was pitching and Arietta took him deep. When, I, when he took him deep, I thought it was over. Up 3-0, Arietta was looking good. I thought it was over. And then things didn't work out. But they did tie it again in the ninth inning on the Bryant home run. But then lost an extra innings. But then they won in Game 4 when they were down 5-2 in the ninth. And myself and most people were thinking, here we go. They're going to lose and then they get to force a Game 5 at Wrigley Field. Have fun facing Cueto and Bumgarner. Cueto, someone you barely even touched aside from the Javier Baez 1-0 home run. But then they came back, scored those runs. Ben Zobris doubled in some runs. Wilson Contreras tied the game with a single up the middle. And then another single up the middle from Javi Baez gave him the 6-5 lead where Roldis Chapman would close it down, striking out the side. National League Championship Series against the Dodgers. Win game one after blowing a 3-1 lead. Miguel Montero hits the pinch hit grand slam on an 0-2 pitch off Joe Blanton in the 8th inning. Dexter Fowler goes back to back with him with a solo jack. They win that game. Game two, Clayton Kershaw completely destroys them. They lose 1-0. Frustrating. Game three, nothing goes right. They get shut out. I believe it was 6-0. Arietta didn't look great. Bats couldn't do anything. Down 2-1 to one in the series. Then they even the series in Game 4. The offense starts to come alive late. Series tied. Game 5. Once again, the offense comes alive. Gives them a 3-2 series lead. Back at Wrigley Field. Face the man who shut them out in Game 2. They get to him early. Early 2-0 lead. Eventually build a 5-0 lead. Kyle Hendricks pitches an absolute masterpiece, only giving up two hits 
in, I believe, seven and a third innings. And they win the pennant, which was by far the least painful, most stress-free game of the entire postseason. I mean, they played a perfect ball game. The Dodgers never had a chance in that game. They couldn't get anyone even in scoring position. Hendricks cruised. The offense did its job. It was pain-free. Then we get to the World Series. Shut out again. Lester gets in early trouble in the first inning. Some things don't go his way. They lose 6 to nothing. Shut out first game of the World Series. Second game, Kyle Schwarber and the Bats come alive. They win to even up the series. Back at Wrigley Field, they lose one nothing. The most frustrating game we've probably ever watched. Game four, nothing goes right. The Indians come out swinging. The Bats don't do much despite grabbing an early lead. They're down three games to one. Game five, John Lester and Walter Chapman pitch to a 3-2 victory to keep the series alive and send it back to Cleveland. Game 6, Addison Russell hits a grand slam, and the Cubs offense easily takes care of the Indians. They force the Game 7. And in Game 7, home runs from Dexter Fowler, David Ross, Javier Baez. And keep in mind, Dexter Fowler hit a leadoff home run in that World Series game off Corey Kluber who had shut them down in his previous two starts in the World Series. Indians tie it late on the Rajay Davis home run 6-6. Rain delay, come back. Ben Zobris doubles in the winning run. Montero adds another run. They win 8-7. They win the World Series. Your brief, dramatic recap of that postseason. The best postseason in Cubs history. So there you have it. Celebrate, have fun, never let anyone tell you we're not the champs because we are. I'm Alex Pat, signing off.